The war in Afghanistan is ramping back up, with President Trump giving the Pentagon authority to set troop levels there, and with reports the Pentagon will send nearly 4,000 more troops to the front lines. This will be the largest deployment of American manpower under the Trump presidency. All this, as Defense Secretary Jim Mattis told lawmakers the other day, we are losing the battle there. Joining us to discuss is Lieutenant Colonel Mitch Utterback. He's a former Special Forces officer in the U.S. Army. Mitch, thanks for being with us. Hey, Rick. I, I want to start with this. There was another unfortunate green on blue attack this week. Afghan soldier, trained by U.S. forces, turns his weapons on the troops trying to help and wounded seven of them. How does this shake the resolve of our men and women on the ground there? Rick, it doesn't. What it just means is you you got to watch your counterparts a little closer. We have duty positions called guardian angels, troops specifically dedicated to watching the Afghans. That's never been a problem in Iraq either. It's specific to Afghanistan. And I know our men and women over there are paying attention to this, but there's guns everywhere. And you could, an Afghan could easily pick up a weapon that's leaning against a wall in a meeting and open fire. They get the drop on us a little quicker than we can get the drop on them. And as you know, nearly two, oh, hundreds of Americans have been killed this way yeah. over the last several years. It's, it's awful. Now, Senator John McCain, back to this troop surge. He says we need a strategy. Is there one? What is the U.S. goal at this point? Well, Rick, just last week, like you said, the SecDef said uh, we're not winning, and, the, and the, the Pentagon is putting together a strategy this summer, a strategy, a whole-of-government strategy, diplomacy, information, the military aspect, and the economic aspect, something that we really haven't known that we've had in the last several years. So we have to be patient to see what this whole-of-government strategy is, but it really has to be a reconciliation with the Taliban. Afghanistan is so remote. It's like the far side of the moon in some places. They need to have a reconciliation with the Taliban and come to some kind of agreement. We need to be there to help them. But, Colonel, you have very specific ideas on what these troops should be doing there in terms of taking the fight to the Taliban. That's right. Uh, over the, you, know, you wouldn't recognize Afghanistan, Rick, from the times that you've been there. It's almost like a ghost town on those bases. Barely enough troops to keep the light on, lights on. I left there in 2015 with less than 10,000 troops. Really staying inside the bases. Only special forces leaving the wire to take the fight to the enemy. This probably a brigade plus size element is going to advise at a more tactical level. We need to get shoulder to shoulder with the Afghan soldiers doing the fighting to be able to call in airstrikes for them, bring in the surveillance assets, and call in medevac, medevac. Afghanistan hardly has any of this. Afghans fight harder when there's an American advisor standing shoulder to shoulder, bringing all those combat enablers, we call them, to bear against the Taliban. But, Colonel, Afghan forces lost 5,000 men last year alone. Uh, General Mattis says the Taliban had a very good year, and they're on track for another very good year. Uh, so where are these new Afghan troops coming from, and, and at what point do we just say enough's enough? Rick, I think probably during this administration we may have to say enough's enough, but we do have to give an opportunity for the Secretary of Defense and the administration to come up with the best strategy we've ever had. But... Afghan troops drive, you know, they drive down dirt roads in Ford Ranger pickup trucks. They, they don't have the, the protection, the firepower that we are used to seeing from, you know, other, other conflicts, specifically like what the Iraqi forces have. It's a very, very difficult area to fight. And one problem is some of these guys don't even, they live in another part of the country, and they're not that fully invested to fight and die on the other side of the country when their family lives on the east side and they're fighting in the west. A strategy where Afghans from the local area are brought into the military and posted there will make them fight harder. Yeah, commitment is obviously an issue. Um, what's the worst thing that can happen if we did leave? Does Afghanistan become another Iraq, fall into ISIS? Uh, does this mean that we can't leave and we're stuck there for decades? What do you see? If, if we decide during this administration that uh, enough's enough and the American people decide enough's enough, I, I do think we'll have to maintain a special operations presence with the ability to continue to take out high-value targets to not allow terrorists and terrorist organizations that could rise and threaten the West, threaten Europe, threaten the United States ever to rise again like Al-Qaeda once had. But at some point we may get to the point where Afghanistan has to manage its own internal security. Something else, though, we need to re-look re at our relationship with Pakistan, who provides the safe haven for the Taliban. You don't have an insurgency without a safe haven, and Pakistan is part of the problem. 
Lieutenant Colonel Mitch Utterback, uh, thanks very much for your time today. We appreciate your insight.